All right, take a look at this argument. If it is snowing, then the mail will be late. It is snowing, therefore the mail will be late. Okay, like the argument we analyzed in the previous lecture, this argument was one that we uh, evaluated in the last thought primer by creating an ordinary truth table using L equals two to the N. We're gonna evaluate this argument again here using an indirect truth table to do so. And we're gonna do that by always identifying the simple statements that comprise the argument, assigning them letters, and then representing the argument symbolically on a single line using those letters and the appropriate operators. In this case, it would be, if it is snowing, horseshoe, the mail will be late. Second premise says it is snowing, and the conclusion says the mail will therefore be late. And we've separated our two premise statements with a single slash, and we've separated our conclusion from the final premise with a double slash. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to assume that conclusion statement is false. And those premise statements, they're all true. And what we're going to see is if it's possible to deduce all the logically necessary truth values for the rest of the parts of this argument without running into contradiction. Because if we can do that, we will have demonstrated this argument's invalid. It's possible for the conclusion to be false even when the premises are true. Okay, But if we can't do that without running into contradiction, then we've proven the argument is valid because there's no way for the conclusion to be false when the premises are true. All right, so we're going to deduce logically necessary truth values. I know that if S is true here, it's got to also be true here because this is all one moment in time and S can't be both true and false at the same time. So then the same goes for L. If L's false here in the conclusion, it's got to be false there. And look what just happened. We just ran into a contradiction because as line two of our conditional truth table, conditional statement truth table says, anytime the left hand side of a horseshoe is true and the right hand side is false, the horseshoe is false. But we assumed the horseshoe to be true. So it's not possible to deduce all of the logically necessary truth values of the component parts of this argument without running into a contradiction. And that means the argument is valid. So I said at the end of the last lecture that when we are able to deduce all of the truth values of the component parts of an argument without contradiction, we have this sort of feeling of success, like, yay, look at me, I did it, and I was successful. But counterintuitively, being able to successfully do that proves that it's a bad argument. Well, the sort of, the, here we have the flip side of the coin, right, where we ran into a problem, it's like, oh, I broke a rule. But really, we should be like, oh, I broke a rule. Yay, that means I've shown the argument is good. It's a valid argument. It's not possible for me to deduce all of the logically necessary truth values without running into a contradiction when I assume the conclusion is false and all the premises are true. Now the truth table for our our ordinary truth table for this exact same argument that we created in the previous thought primer, you'll notice that unlike the previous argument that we were talking uh, analyzing in the previous lecture, this truth table doesn't have any line of truth values that looks like this, okay? And that's because this is a valid argument, and that's what this truth table reveals. So if we try to uh, insert these truth values, we have contradictions, and we're not, we can't have contradictions in our truth tables.